You all hear that? <laughs> so let us begin with Barbara and our prelude, Spirit of God. Thank you, Barbara. What a wonderful way to lead us into worship. And let us join now in our call to worship as it's printed in your bulletin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. And now, being the last Sunday in the month, we were, will be open to new hymns of your choice. That includes those from Zoom. If any of you have a hymn that you would like to do, um, we're going to put Barbara to the test. 504. Do you want to come and help lead, Jeff? Uh, let's just do one. We'll, we'll pick three hymns. This is the first. We'll do one verse of each. I am 
danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun, and I and I came down from heaven and I danced on earth at Bethlehem. I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Thank you. You'll have another chance at the end of the service to do it again. So if you really want to sing something, be ready then. I'll try and recognize the hands and the jumps and whatever else uh, you uh, do to get my attention. But now let us continue on in our service with our congregational prayer as it's printed in your bulletin saying together, O oh, Son of God, who came to live among us as one of us, whose blood was shed for our forgiveness, fulfilling the perfect law of sacrifice, which the Mosaic law prefigured. We are complete in you. We praise and thank you for your presence in the world so long ago and your presence with us today in the Holy Spirit in our hearts. You met all the just requirements of the law and invite us to follow you to the Father in heaven. Without your obedience to every point of law, we would not have the option of following you. Help us choose this day to walk in your footsteps and to make you our God as the foreigner Ruth did so long ago. In your precious name, we pray for your embrace. Amen. And as we continue in prayer, I would ask if there are any updates on our list or any new additions that should be there. Yes, Cheryl. Uh, I just want to be added to the prayer list because I'm having back surgery on Thursday. <laughs> back surgery on Thursday. If you think I'm letting you into my exclusive club, oh, you'll have to light my candles next week. <laughs> oh, don't hide the matches. <laughs> yes. Shots are becoming mandated. Okay, and, and some are unwilling to get the booster, so their jobs are in jeopardy. Okay, a lot of mandates going around in the world today, aren't there? Yes, Gail. <laughs> okay. Take take Gail off. Amen. 
Pastor, an update? Sure. Rosa's aunt, Giovanna, is home recovering. She's doing better. Okay. Also, Tom Hills is home recovering from his uh, heart surgery. He had a few little bumps, but he's home now. So, so things. You want to direction. take him off the list then? Um, keep him on the list. Okay. Still. Good. All right. Rezazan's doing much better. Okay. And you and, are... and Claudio actually is, I think he's, he's back to 90% at least. Okay, so Claudia can come off? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So Giovanna is home, you said as well? Or? Yes. Yes, she's home and recovering. And you still want continued prayers? Yeah, for a couple. Okay. This gets back. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, Michelle wants to come off. Mm -hmm. Michelle Godreau Thompson. In our list, any others that we can take off? Jeannie. Not Yeah, it appears we might be losing more staff. So uh, we have um, we have two more. You said that succumb to COVID. To residents? Okay, thank you. Are there any others? Not seeing any, then let us continue in a spirit of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your presence with us this morning and for your presence with those who have recovered to at least some extent. And, and we name Giovanna and Tom among those that are um, improved in their condition and, and Claudia was as well, uh, home and uh, at a hundred percent. So we praise you for that. And we praise you for the safe passage of Gail back to our midst from her travels. We thank you for the improvement of Michelle Goodrow Tom in uh, on our list. We, we lift up, continue to lift up the, the adult disabled community, the DDS in our state uh, because of the staffing shortages and, um, and we pray for the families of those two residents um, who succumbed to COVID in the past week, despite being vaccinated. So we thank you that you have seen fit to call them home. But we also pray for those who have um, run up against mandates in our state for continued shots that are unwilling or unable to get them and which puts their 
jobs in jeopardy. So we pray for them, for the wisdom, pray for those that are making the mandates in their wisdom. And Lord, we pray for our church as well, for all of those who are in attendance this morning, for all of those who couldn't make it today for one reason or another. We ask for those that are fighting illness to be with them and heal them. We ask for those that are unable to, um, to drive or to make it out of the house this morning, your continued presence with them. And Lord, we praise you and thank you for all that you continue to do for us, for the ways that you care for us, for the love that you show to us. Lord, we can't help but love you, for you first loved us. And Lord, we thank you, especially for your son, Jesus, who came and lived among us and died as we die, yet lives forever with you. For he rose again from that death. And while he was here, he taught his disciples to pray. And we can pray with them as people have done through the ages, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if I failed to mention Cheryl in her upcoming surgery, forgive me and let us pray for her as well, especially this week. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Now comes our time for the offering and we'll invite um, Brian and Jeff up to share some music for that. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away, fly away, fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, fly away, fly away. I'll fly away, fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away, fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away, fly away, fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away, fly away, fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away, fly away, fly away. I'll fly away, fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away, fly away in the morning. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away, fly away, fly away. I'll fly away, fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away, fly away in the morning. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, fly away, fly away. Amen. What a joy to look forward to. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the offerings brought forth this morning. We ask for your presence with them as they fly away to our community and to our church to support the work of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now Brian will share our gospel this morning. Uh, this morning's gospel reading comes from Mark's 12th chapter, verses 28 through 34. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. May we hear in these words, the gospel of the Lord. And as we continue, let us join in hymn number 2272, Holy Ground. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. Standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. As we continue our readings in the Old Testament during this year, we're moving backwards in the order of the Old Testament from Job to Ruth today. My Bible says of the uh, book of Ruth that the Septuagint, the Greek version of the Hebrew scriptures is responsible for placing Ruth between Judges and 1 Samuel, which gives you a hint of where to find it if you're looking in your Bible. Locating the book here, though, disrupts the sequence of the Deuteronomistic history that begins with Joshua and ends with 2 Kings. Ruth shows no evidence of Deuteronomistic editing. It's a mouthful to say, I admit. 
Well, more likely Ruth is a short story whose setting is the period before the monarchy. And since Ruth married a man of Israel named Boaz, who then became the father of Obed, the father of Jesse and the father of King David, that seems to be supported here. Let's hear then how this, the story of how a woman of Moab became a member of the royal line of David, at least the beginning of the story. Today's reading is Ruth chapter one, verses one through 18. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malan and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malan and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons, and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. They said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. 
May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sermon today, I called your God shall be my God. Sometimes circumstances in our lives force us to move in directions that we cannot anticipate or plan. Famine in the land where Elimelech and his wife Naomi lived was one of those times for them. Where they lived was a familiar place for those of us who follow Christ. It was the place of our Lord's birth, Bethlehem of Judah. They belonged to the tribe of Ephraim, of the people delivered from Egypt so long ago, who had finally settled in the land of Israel. But life had become unbearable for them in that land given by God because of famine. They could find no food and they were forced to move to sustain their lives. But the famine was pervasive throughout that land. They had to leave the promised land and settle in a place that had a history of contention with the Israelites. But that place had plenty of food, enough for them and their two children. Now, I'm sure that their journey was not easy through the hills and over the river across that water to the foreign land of unsupportive people to those of Israel. But they moved and found a welcome, despite the historical division between the cultures. And there they settled, happy and well-fed. And they adapted to the culture of their adopted country, mingling with its people and learning to love them, despite the differences in religion and their worship of different gods. And then tragedy struck again for this family. Elimelech suddenly died, leaving Naomi a widow with two sons to care for. As time passed and the grief lingered for Naomi, the two sons grew and adapting to that culture of Moab, took wives from among the foreigners. In those days, intermarriage was frowned upon, to say the least, especially marriage between those of Israel and those who followed other gods. Israel was very protective of its citizens and its religious purity. Those of Israel had experienced their God's displeasure in following other gods turning from their own. But I guess that love won over law and place over culture. Another one of those unexpected circumstances dictating unanticipated and unplanned moves in life. These children had adapted to the culture in which they found themselves and married women who had been raised in it. Perhaps their own worship had turned from the God of Israel to the gods of Moab. Or more than likely, perhaps, there had been a mixture of worship styles in their homes, so everyone was happy. And for a while, the compromise worked. 
until tragedy struck the family again and both sons died, making their wives widows as well. The family had morphed again and now included three who grew grieved for their husbands. Naomi no longer had to grieve alone, but bonded with those wives of her sons in their grief. And that was a powerful cord of mutual experience that had them tightly bonded. But there came a time when Naomi yearned for the comfort of her own culture. She had lived as a widow in a foreign land and now had seen her two sons die as well as her husband. Her daughters-in-law were not of the same faith. And though they experienced the same status as widows, there was no commonality of support of her faith community. So she decided that she had to seek her God again. Naomi longed for the support of her faith community and decided that since her God had seemed to have a change of heart and supplied her homeland with the needed food, it was time to return there. Her daughters-in-law began the journey with her, but Naomi discouraged their move to a land foreign to them. There would be nothing in Israel for them as Moabite women, nothing that is but rejection. There would be no chance for them to find a husband in the land of Israel, and they would be forced to live out their lives as singles in a land that rejected childless women as condemned by God. But only Orpah heeded her mother-in-law's advice and returned to her home to seek comfort in what she knew. But Ruth, perhaps seeing the strength in Naomi's faith during her time of grief, refused to leave her. She stubbornly clung to Naomi, wearing down her objections until she relented and accepted her company on the journey back to Israel. During the arguments that led up to the decision of one to stay and the other to leave, there was an argument that was brought up by Naomi about the heritage of her daughters-in-law. May the Lord deal kindly with you, says the scripture, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. These two were both widows without a chance of carrying on the name of the family through children with their now dead husbands. But they were of an age when that could still happen. The chances of finding a husband in Israel where they would be shunned as foreigners was slim to none. Childbearing in those days was an honored function of a woman while the lack of children often found them shunned in society. They had both lived at least 10 years with their Israeli husbands without having children when both husbands died. They were young enough still to redeem themselves as women and bear children in their own tribes and continue the legacy of the family there. Children were seen as a sign of security for the women who bore them and the men who took part in their conception. And in the case of the male children, a way to carry on the name of the family through time. Orpah chose to return to the family of her birth 
and serve there with a possibility of becoming the wife of one in her tribe and bearing children to carry on that name. But while Naomi was trying to convince them both that a new marriage and the bearing of children would be a blessing to them, she said some things that sound strange to us about marriage. But Naomi said, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? What is this thing about bearing sons to marry her widowed daughters-in-law? In those days in Israel was practiced what was called levery marriage. In that scenario, if a man died without bearing sons with his wife, the man's brother was instructed to marry the widow and produce children with her for his brother. And since the two who died were the only sons of Naomi, the only way that the women could participate in such an arrangement would be for Naomi to bear sons who would be brothers of those who died. Even if I thought there were hope for me, she says, even if I had a husband tonight and bear sons, would you wait until they were grown? Would you refrain from marrying? If Naomi could produce those sons at her advanced age, it would be a long time before they would be mature enough to marry the widows. They would be advanced in age themselves and near the end of their time of childbearing ability. No, she argued, it would be better for them to turn back to their families and seek a new husband now that could make that possible for them. I don't know if the practice of levering marriage was still going on in the time of Jesus, but there is an extreme example of it in a question posed to Jesus by some scribes, those religious scholars of the day, trying to argue against the resurrection of the dead. They asked the Lord about the childless widow who eventually married seven brothers and produced no children by any of them, who then asked him who her husband whose husband she would be in the resurrection. The full story is in Mark chapter 12, just before today's reading in verses 18 through 23. And Jesus' answers, answer follows until verse 27. It is a great question and response about the hope of eternity after life in the body and worthy of another sermon someday, but I won't incorporate it into this one. I would encourage you to read that passage when you have a chance. But my focus today is on Ruth's decision to follow Naomi to the strange land of her husband's birth. She was raised in a land where many gods existed for many circumstances and was only exposed to the concept of one God who controlled everything in life when she married the, into the family of Naomi. She learned from her husband of her belief in that one God. 
and witnessed the faith of her mother-in-law in her time of grief after losing her husband. She saw in Naomi the comfort her God gave in her time of great loss and how she was able to extend that to both of her daughters-in-law in their own subsequent loss. In her culture, there was no such assurance of the presence of a living God in the varying circumstances of life. That God appealed to her in a mighty way, even to the point of giving up what she had known as a product of that culture in which she was raised. What finally convinced Naomi to let her tag along was her commitment to change the focus of her life and to embrace the God of Naomi. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. She was telling Naomi, I have seen your strength in loss, your grace under pressure, your comfort in your God, and I want that too. There was something missing in my youth and my growing. And when I see your relationship with your God, I know it is something I have desired for as long as I can remember. I want your God to be a part of my life now and forever. Your son brought me into your family and there was no desire on my part to leave you alone in this time of change. You choose to return to your home and I choose to leave mine, go with you and remain with you there. I want to follow your God because of your example. So I will leave you today with one question. Do you remember who it was that gave you an example of a loving relationship with God that led to your choice to follow God? If you can identify your Naomi, take some time to thank them if you can, and then be a Naomi to someone else yourself. God's kingdom needs many Naomi's. God bless you in that endeavor, amen. So once again, anybody from Zoom have a hint? 7-12. Okay, we're gonna start with one from the congregation here, number 7-12. Maybe. You can do it. Oh, where's Barbara? I sing the song of saints of God, patient and brave and true. Shepherd and the corn on a green, and all of them saints of God, and I knew. 
mean God helping to be one too. just take a moment today as the world celebrates the opposite of our all saints we celebrate the transition of our saints to heaven not sure what the world is celebrating in on Halloween day well it's kind of hard to tell but why don't we just take a moment to lift up those saints that we know that have preceded us to that land beyond the river. I know in our congregation, we suffered the loss of two this year. We celebrated during our charge conference on Tuesday. Those being Carl Asplund, who passed from us in April and Helen Salai in September. So we remember their presence among us and their presence now with God. Are there others that you have in your hearts? Yes, G. Donna Kling. Yes. Helen Cousins. Catherine and John Dalton. Catherine and John Dalton. Sharon McKinnon. Sharon McKinnon. Yes. Fran Hollister. Fran Hollister. Bill and Emily McKinley. Jeanette Dalton. Frank Laffler. 
Lackler. Lynn Conklin. Lynn Lovell, yes. Al Zydig. George Coughlin. Dot. Sadwick. Bill and Helen Elliott. John Holmberg. Donna Clayton. Yes, Donna. Brand Hollister. Yes, Brand as well. That's what I'd like to mention. Okay. Even though we lost seven, I lost seven siblings in one particular. October is domestic violence awareness month. And my younger sister. Florence, Florence Jetty. What's your name? And Trinket. And Trinket. Ed Prickett. Lord, we thank you for all of these names brought forth today. For all those people that were so close to us in our hearts and are now close to you in their spirits. We thank you for opening your home to them. For naming them among the saints among us. We praise you and thank you for the love that makes that possible, for the death and resurrection and ascension of your son to call us all home to you. So Lord, we praise you and thank you for your great love and for your great open arms that accepts these saints into your home. In Jesus' name, we praise you and thank you. Amen. Now, as we move to the end of our service, let us join together in our congregational prayer for renewal as it's found in your bulletin as we say together, O oh Lord, our God, we come to you in faith, for how else can we approach you? Your presence with us is only known as we trust in your provision for us, as we accept all things from your hand. Restore our faith in you as we accept that all things come from you. Help us to perceive, O oh Lord, that what seems bad to us in our experience may have a benefit for someone else and give us the strength to endure that what seems extreme to us can be managed with your presence as we trust in you. For even our very lives are your gift to us and our days are numbered from the beginning of them. Give us the confidence to trust that you will carry out all your plans for us. In the name of your precious only son who died for us, we pray. Amen. And now may the God who lives in heaven, our Father, and his Son, Jesus Christ, who reigns with him there, 
and the Holy Spirit whom he sent to be with us forevermore be with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Barbara. I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen.